Billions of dollars of compensation promised to Canadian industries negatively affected by the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement are up in the air today after Canada's Minister of International Trade says they're still under review. We are reviewing now uh, what the compensation plans will be and I am not going to make commitments for my fellow ministers who are back home in Canada, um, but let me say we appreciate the importance of compensation to affected sectors by TPP. And let me also say it would be very inappropriate right now for us to commit to specific packages given that we're actually reviewing the agreement overall. Those comments may be setting off alarm bells for the dairy, poultry and egg farmers who were promised $4.3 billion over 15 years by the previous Conservative government. The money was intended to compensate for Canada allowing 3.25% more foreign imports into its domestic market. During the election campaign, the Tories also promised a billion dollars to help the auto industry adjust. TPP will allow cars with up to 45% foreign content to enter the country tariff-free. Time for the big picture. Goldie Hyder is president and CEO of Hill & Knowlton Strategies, and Armin Yalnitsan is senior economist with the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives. Uh, Goldie, I want to start with you. Is this a surprise that they would say they will revisit on compensation? It would seem quite predictable. Yeah, actually, I agree that. with you. I think it's uh, basically the, the uh, government of the day when it was uh, running for office said, we intend to review the deal. Uh, that was something that they ran on. And so it's not a surprise that the intention is to say we're bringing it to Parliament. We're, we want to hear from the public. Uh, we want to have what I think are extensive consultations. So none of that part of it should be a surprise. The question is, is any of that going to actually matter? But we'll come to that, I'm sure. What's your view on these compensation packages in the broadest sense. I mean, clearly there's some adjustments that these industries, and particularly dairy and auto, will face. Are these packages the right way to accommodate those structural changes? I don't really know because I, I, I don't really know what is going to happen to dairy, for example, yeah. once this deal starts moving. And, you know, frankly, I think a good deal of this is posturing. Uh, I think, you know, the Liberals have to say they're going to review what they did. Right. Is this the right thing? Should they offer more? Should they offer less? I don't even know if there's room for them to perhaps do some renegotiation at the edges on one-offs. I don't know what it is that they're looking at. None of us do. But they, you know, they're not going to just take something that another government craft it for them and say, yeah, we're good We to go. love that. But, but in fairness, if you're the ones who are affected, you know, the stakeholders that are affected, when they came out and said, we support the deal that the previous government signed, let's be clear, uh, it was about the money. It was contingent upon the money being right. there over the period of time that's there. So if there's any suggestion now that, uh, you know, there's a question, if you will, of what comes first, pardon the pun, with the chicken or the egg here, oh. right? <laughs> I, I have to get that in there. Come on, that's a good one. Um, you know, is it about, is it about um, ratification or is is it about compensation? Which comes first? Now, the industry will say, I think the industry is at part of the deal, will say, well, you told us you're going to give us this much money over this much time. We agree to the deal. Right. But if there's something new on the table, now I suspect the industries will say, well, we need to reassess whether our support for that deal is, is in place or is not. Is this how these deals get done, Armin? I mean, this is not the first enormous trade deal that Canada has been a part of. NAFTA is certainly not uh, Paleozoic in, in our history. These Because the, the absolute dollars seem eye-popping to the uh, unversed in how these deals go. Well, I think this is the way trade deals go. But this is absolutely the biggest deal that Canada has ever signed on to. So why would an incoming government say, carte blanche, whatever you did is good with us, when they are both pro-trade uh, parties, but it's not clear what, the, you know, the devil's in the details here, yeah. and we're just starting to see the details. And there's in fact, they were landed with the details just after they were elected. And so there's Obama in. in Asia with the pen hurry, in hurry, hurry. saying, come on, you <laughs> yeah, got to sign on. this yeah. thing. Well, he's got to be worried about himself, right? He's got to get through his own uh, Congress. And I suspect that that's one of the reasons he's saying, hurry, hurry, hurry. Look, yeah. if you like this deal, it's not a great deal for everybody, but it's a good enough deal. Let's get on with it. So how we do you balance be, that? Well, we how should be concerned that? by that, right? Like, I'm not actually interested in having the United States of America drive an agenda for Canada. So I, I actually respect the fact that a government is going to say and honor its commitments and its platform to say, we're going to look at this. My question is, is, is it going to matter, first of all, when you have already signed this this deal, let's be honest, is a lot further along than CETA is. Its, it's document is available. Everybody's looked at it. Everybody's agreed to it. Compensation agreements have been put forward. It sounds like we're in a rubber stamp process, except the government has said, no, we're not. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to look at this. We're actually going to consult. And meanwhile, the other partners are saying, uh, hurry up, Canada. Yeah. But how much maneuvering room really do they have? I mean, within That's their unfair. circle of control is compensation, but this deal it sort of feels like the train's left the station. Well, I think that's true. And we 
we don't know what kind of room there is to negotiate or if they're just basically you know deciding whose uh, nest they're going to feather in different ways but I think the really interesting thing here is the United States this deal might be moot because the United States the Democrats themselves in the United States aren't all gaga about it. And we shouldn't be reasons, happy about that, right? I mean, well, we should be focused, and I think this government is focused on wanting a deal done. Let's be clear. They're free traders. They've said so. Yeah, but one of the issues that comes up for the Americans is what's going to happen to American workers. And there's all sorts of language saying that this is actually going to protect workers. But when you look at the language, labor is at the kids' table on this stuff. You want to protect capital and investments. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of monitor There's all sorts of enforcement mechanisms available for you. If you want to protect labor interests, there's no monetary penalties whatsoever. It's a whole other tier of protection. So there might be a lot of Americans that are saying, this just isn't good enough. We're negotiating with 11 other nations. Half of them are very young, very low uh, populations that are very right. young with yeah. very low wages. And the sector that seems to count on that front here in Canada, in particular in Ontario, is the auto industry, which has been involved in trade negotiations for decades and decades. And they've expressed real concerns. But I, I just want to make it very clear that what we're reading about about the temporary entry uh, things and intracorporate transfers and all these other other mechanisms that are embedded in this document might mean it goes far beyond the impact on dairy, poultry, and auto. It might affect a large range of skills like engineers. There's a whole trade and services agreement being negotiated too. And there's lots of intercorporate movement possible there for advertising, for marketing, for polstering, for uh, engineering, for uh, accounting, for all sorts of things that we assume we're protected for here. Christian Freeland referenced the other ministers here. Yes. How does one navigate this even within the bureaucracy? I mean, there's just, it touches, as you say, it touches everything. Well, it's a great question because in her mandate letter, which is now, of course, publicly available, there's a couple of critical points here. One is she's actually charged with implementing implement TPP and CETA. Hmm. So a decision's clearly been made that these deals are going to go through. It's, hmm. The devil may be in the details. We may have to iron out a few things here or there. That's the first point. The second point she's been mandated to do is actually support the adjustment. And that means consulting. That means talking to the premiers and talking to the other stakeholders to be able to say, how do we make sure, because it's in our collective interest to have a smooth transition, particularly in a volatile economy. Now is no time to play chicken, <laughs> if you will, with our economy. Like We have to make sure, whatever your views are on supply management, that's moot now. What, what matters is, can you actually get these industries on that runway of a 15-year plan, in this case, five years only for auto, and have a plan at the other end that still has a viable economy at the other end of it? I just want to make it perfectly clear that the TPP may not go through because of what's happening in the U.S. We've got right. but we don't half, control the nations, that. half the nations are young, half the nations are aging. It makes yeah. sense to have more labor mobility to meet the labor shortages that are going to come, uh, come through, but on whose terms and for whose benefit? And we're entering a presidential year, and there's a lot of Americans that don't like what they're seeing. But she's the a free trade. trader. I'm happy to say that the Minister of International Trade is a free trader. Won't she's matter come if out. the Americans say no to Agreed, her. but we don't control that. But we do control our own own situation and our own destiny. And I think on that front, one of the challenges that they box themselves into, because with great respect, I say, if she's watching, campaign's over. It's governing time, right? Now we have to pivot as a, as a country to start governing and executing on the things that you're, you know these mandates now speak about, which is ultimately about getting a deal done, because we actually need that deal. I'm sure she is watching. It's breakfast in Asia. Watching, yeah. So I mean, it's appointment <laughs> television. Thank you very much you. to Great. your you. to, 